we thank the Lord for this morning as we welcome our sister. We welcome the Lord this morning. It is uh, a time that uh, we have a privilege of uh, sharing in the word of God. And I know all of us will be blessed by it. And so uh, because time is so spent and we have activities to be done, I like uh, straight away we pray and we enter into the word of God, but I'll request this have a place to write because this may be some new information to some of us. Share, ha have a place to write some notes. Make sure that what you are listening to is what is written. There is always a habit of people saying amen to the things that are not written. And so this morning we want to make sure that what we are writing and saying amen to is written. Don't feel offended if you don't have a place to write. You can always take the notes from your neighbor and from your friend. And so, uh, I know we'll be blessed. I know we'll be blessed. Yes, because every time we share in the word of God, it's a blessing. And so, uh, I like to pray. And then uh, we enter into this topic, the Lord's Supper, when and why. The Lord's Supper, when and why. I see the floor is muddy. So we can just bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we say thank you and thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be able to listen to thy word once again. Lord, it's a privilege in these days to share your word because uh, many have lost the appetite of it. And so as uh, we handle this sacred word, may the Holy Spirit illumine our minds that we may be able to understand that which you are speaking to us in such a time as this. I pray that uh, you may remove every prejudice, every preconceived idea, that we may get what the Bible and inspiration says. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, uh, the Lord's Supper, when and why? Uh, I'd like to start uh, with uh, some statement. In our higher calling, page 348, paragraph 4. Page 348, paragraph 4. The, as I read this, the main reason why actual reformation is not going forward, the main reason why there is a lot of confusion in our churches in, and in our reformatory movements, It is because of uh, half-hearted reformation. And half-hearted reforms is actually called by Sister White lukewarmness. And you understand lukewarmness is the state of the Laodicean church. So if our reformatory movements will have power, if our churches need a true revival, it is to embrace true reforms, full reforms, I mean. Listen to this. 
he says, half-hearted Christians are worse than infidels. For their reform, for their deceptive words and non-committal position lead many astray. She continues to say, the infidel shows his colors. The lukewarm Christian deceives both parties. He is neither a worldling nor a good Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. So half-hearted Christianity and reforms. It actually, it's not a good worldling. It is not a good Christian. So it is a deception to both sides. And Satan uses this state to do, to accomplish his work most. Listen to another thing that she talks about, about uh, these reforms. It says in uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, 60, 141, Paragraph 2. She says, some teachers and managers are only half converted. Some teachers and managers who are only half converted are stumbling blocks to others. They concede some things and make half reforms. But when greater knowledge comes, They refuse to advance, preferring to work according to their own ideas. This is half reforms. This is half Christianity. It is lukewarmness. And lukewarmness is referred as Laodicean state. So you my brothers and sisters, you may be seated here saying that you are reformatory movement, yet we are Laodiceans. Do you see that? Do you see the danger we are facing with half reforms? And we brag that we are present truth preachers, is it? But if we are not doing the full reforms, what are we? Laodiceans. Now, do you have the uh, 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 do you have any reason to uh, rebuke a Laodicean when you are a Laodicean? No. Paul says in the book of Romans we cannot condemn the things that we do. We cannot condemn the things we do. So, Lord Supper, when and why? And uh, I want to speak to you in a soft language, in a humble language. Because I'm not, uh, it's not a quarrel, it's not a condemnation. It's not a, a condemnation. And uh, maybe the reason we do the things we do is because we, we don't have information.
So I want you to take this session as a learning session. Please give her what she needs. So are you listening to me? Yeah, I don't want you to be distracted. This is important. I want you to take this as a learning session, not a rebuke. Amen? Amen. In, 18, in 1844, why was there a Philadelphian condition? Because there was brotherly love. And people, and people confessed their faults and they laid bare what was in their hearts. And then the differences were removed. We are preparing for the meal, the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. All the differences have to be put away. How do you wash each other's foot when you are actually in uh, variance? The Bible says in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, let us see if we get it. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11. Where actually Paul talks about uh, the Lord's Supper. Has somebody got the verse? From verse 23. That is where we will start. And uh, this is the word of God. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed to he, be, he he was betrayed, took bread. And before I go deep into this, how many people? Uh, we need to have confessions, and we need our hearts to be clear. How many among us does feel that uh, the Lord's Supper has a particular time to be taken and a particular day? Let me see your hands. That it has to be taken such a time and on such a day. Do we have anyone who believes that? It's not... It's not seen to confess what you believe. How many feel it should not be taken on Sabbath? Please. Some feel it should not be taken on Sabbath, is it? That is how you have been taught or that is how you have read it? That is what you believe. That is how you have been taught. Have you been able to ascertain that from the word of God and inspiration? You only heard somebody speak about that. You took it and you stand offended when it is taken on Sabbath. Amen. Amen. It is good to confess these things because we have seen some difficulty that has been there. Let us not hide each other. This is no time for hiding. Amen? Yeah, we have to bring these things clearly out so that uh, we may be brothers and sisters. This is Philadelphian Reformation. But let us look at what inspiration talks about this thing. I didn't want to beat about the bush because I know this variant is going on. And I wouldn't want people to take the Holy Communion with variances happening. Will it have any meaning? 
No, it won't have any meaning, is it? So he says that uh, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, so Christ took that supper at night. When he had given thanks and said, he said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Come to verses 27. It tells them about the breaking of the bread and the taking of the wine, the blood. And Paul says this, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So, if we do anything wrong on this communion, partaking of the communion, we are guilty, is it? We are guilty of the blood of the Lord, is it? So if we impose something that has not been said, we break, we bring it unworthily, is it? Yes, and then he says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink that of that cup. For 29, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, verse 30, verse 30, for this cause, men are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, they are dead, both spiritual and physically. So he says that judge among us yourself. So when, now we come to the when should the meal be taken? Is Sabbath prohibited? Because something it is a work. Something it is a work that is, uh, it should not be allowed on Sabbath. So let, let us see what uh, the inspiration says about this. I'll be reading from uh, I'll be reading from uh, 21 MR. page 119. 119. So, listen to this. We are talking about when, is it? When can it be taken? Is it prohibited on Sabbath? Amen? Yeah, because this is, these are the teachings we have received as a reformatory movement and we have embraced it that it should not be taken back. June 25, 1892. June 25, 18. What day do you think was that? Those who have phones and you can Google very fast. It was on Sabbath. It was on which day? Now listen what happened to this day. Today, quarterly meeting was held in the church. Which date? June 25th, 18. Which is which day? Who is writing? Is she a prophet? 
Today, quarterly meeting was held in the church. Willie spoke from Isaiah 50, verse 10 and verse 11. 50, verse 10 and 11. In the afternoon, the Lord's Supper was administered. preceded by the ordinance of feet washing. Are we together? The celebration of this ordinance is the fulfillment of the command. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. What a place is this for hushing controversies, for forgiving those who have done us injury. This is the time if one has anything against brother to make it right and to settle every difficulty. So we are finding that on this day, which is on the Sabbath, the Holy Communion was partaken of. She continues downwards, let no malice, no hatred be cherished by those who meet around the communion table. Let, let me go slowly, my sister, let no malice, no hatred be, be cherished by those who meet around the communion table. Let those who meet, meet as those who have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us look at another thing. It was on Sabbath afternoon, is it? PSM, Selected Messages Book 3, 3 SM. 261, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. 3SM, 261, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. We are looking at when can it be taken, is it? We have found one statement that it was taken on Sabbath afternoon, is it? Let us look at this one. This is in Battle Creek, Michigan in the USA, Sabbath, January 1, 1859. It was the first Sabbath of the year. It fell on January 1st. Write down these dates. You can Google and see which day was it. January 1, 1859. It was Sabbath. The things that were done on this Sabbath were two. and you will be shocked by them. Baptism and Holy Communion. Amen? Some also actually say that baptism should not be done on Sabbath, but this was done that day. In the presence of the prophet and she didn't condemn it. She says, it is the commencement of the new year. The Lord gave James liberty Sabbath afternoon in preaching upon the necessary preparation for this baptism. Mungu alimpa James White, uh, ule uwazi wa kuongea juu ya uh, kuandaliwa kwa ubatizo. So let me repeat it. The Lord gave James liberty Sabbath afternoon in preaching about the necessary preparation for baptism. and to partake the, of the Lord's Supper. 
there was much feeling, emotions in the congregation. At intermission, pale katika nafasi ya mapumziko. At intermission, all repaired to the water. Where seven followed their Lord in baptism. It was a powerful season and of the deepest interest. Two little sisters, about 11 years old, were baptized. Praise the Lord. Even these children can start understanding Christ so well they accept him as their personal savior. I mean, when the child comes to an age, she understands or he understands that Christ is the savior and presents herself or himself for baptism, there is no way you can say no. One, Carolina C. prayed in the water to be kept and spotted from the world. So even a sister can pray before baptism starts. You know, sometimes we hold on to things which are unnecessary. And we are so offended when these things are done, is it? You see how half reforms are as bad as Laudation step, is it? Somebody who is having half information is so worse than any other person because they, they argue a lot and they don't know what they're arguing about. Then comes this statement. In the evening, the church followed the example of their Lord and washed another's feet. and then partook of the Lord's Supper. We have afternoon, and then we have now what? Evening, is it? Which day? Sabbath. There was rejoicing and weeping in that house. The place was awful and yet glorious on account of the presence of the Lord. So the Lord was there present in that Sabbath. Let us look at another instance. Move these prejudices. I'm reading from uh, Evangelism, page 274. Paragraph three. Don't dismiss it because little if room combined it. If you want the original, it is in manuscript 102, 1904. Manuscript 102, 1904. In the early days of the Advent movement, in the early days, siku za kwanza kwanza. When our members were few, the celebration of the ordinary was made a most profitable occasion. On Friday, before the ordinance, Which ordinance? Lord's Supper, okay. Every church member endeavored to clear away everything that will separate him from the brethren and from God. Hearts were closely searched. Prayers for divine revelation of hidden sin were honestly offered. Confessions of overreaching in trade or ill advice towards hastily spoken of sins cherished were made. Confessions were made, just like that. 
after this work was done, then the day that followed, which, which day follows Friday? The ordinance was taken. Praise the Lord. You know, I thank the Lord I came. I had arranged not to come in this place, in the first place when Zadok told me to come. I thought that I could do some planting in my farm. Praise the Lord I'm planting in the farm. So even if I'll be late planting the natural seed, the spiritual seed is never late. And that is what matters to me. I better not harvest in my garden, but Christ has his kingdom harvested. It removes all this prejudice we are having. Let us go to the last statement on when. We have seen afternoon, evening, and then Sabbath, all on the Sabbath. Now listen to the last statement. Still this comes from uh, evangelism, page uh, 276 uh, from uh, paragraph 3 to, para to, to evangelism 277. So just write from 276 to 277, evangelism, okay? Now, if you are not satisfied with evangelism, because I know the issues we have on evangelism, okay? Right beside it, letter 23A. Eighteen ninety-three. She says this. Sabbath morning. We have found afternoon, evening, and now it is morning. When church at this place celebrated the ordinances, Brother Dash was present. Now, I want you to listen to this statement carefully again because it's a good statement. This brother was invited to partake of the Lord's Supper, that Sabbath morning. It says, he was invited to unite in the ordinance of feet washing. but he said he preferred only to witness. He asked if participation in this ordinance was required before one could partake of communion and was assured by a brethren that it was not obligatory and that he will, welcome, he, was, he will be welcome to the table of the Lord. And so this, this Sabbath was a most precious day to, my, to, to his soul. <coughs> he said that he had never had a happier day in his life. Continuing on, it says, he afterward decided to have an interview with me, to have an interview with Sister White. And we had a pleasant visit. His conversation was very interesting. And we had a precious season of prayer together. I believe that he is a servant of God. So this was not just an ordinary person. I gave him my books, Great Controversy, Patriarchs and Prophets, and Steps to Christ. He seemed he, he seemed much pleased. He seemed much pleased. Said he wanted all the light he could get in order to meet the opponents of our faith. He was baptized before leaving for his home. How many things took place? Ordinance of the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, and then what? Baptism. On which day? Morning. And then Lord's Supper in the morning, baptism was done in the evening. 
he then said he will return to present the truth to his own congregation. So if he went to teach them that the, sub, the Holy Communion and uh, baptism was not to be done on uh, Sabbath, what would he have been teaching them? Lies, is it? Yeah, because he could not do something which was wrong. So that, that is when. Are we together, the children of God? Are we settled in truth? I. I always say and I tell you people, when I heard about this church, I was told it is a church that reads. What happened to the reading and you turn to the listening of men? Can you talk to me? We are busy. I know you have been doing this because you didn't have information. Is it? Yeah. But now we are in the in the light. What do you do with the light? When the light comes to you, what do you do? You walk in light. Why do you walk in light? Can you somebody remind me? In him was life, and the life was the light of. So when the light comes from the life, what does it carry? The life. So when you follow the light, you, the light, you are following what? You are partaking of that life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So if you receive this light, you are receiving what? The life of Jesus. That is about when. So I, 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 I pray that this prejudice will be over, and then you will teach it to others. Amen? So uh, we go to the most important also point. That was important, but also we go to another very important session for like 10 minutes and then we can go to the next session. Why partake? Why do we have the Lord's Supper? I won't read a lot of things, but uh, just uh, educate ourselves on these things. Uh, I'll be reading from uh, Desire of Ages, from uh, page 645 to 646. <clears throat> this is when... Uh, uh, Christ wanted to wash uh, the feet of uh, Peter. You remember that time? In the book of, uh, was it in John? And he said, no, you can't wash my feet. And then Christ told him, you don't know what I'm doing. Listen to what she says. Solemnly, Christ said to Peter, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Listen to this statement. The service which Peter refused was a type of a higher cleansing. Why do we participate in the Lord's Supper? Why? Talk to me. For a higher what? Do you need only a higher cleansing on Friday and not on a Sabbath? In fact, the Sabbath itself is a sign of a higher cleansing, true sanctification, is it? I gave them my Sabbath so that they may know I am the Lord. Who does what? And sanctification is a higher cleansing, is it? So if you argue you can't take the Lord's Supper on a, high, uh, on a Sabbath, it's like you're saying higher cleansing doesn't have anything to do with me on Sabbath. So the Lord's Supper is a sign of higher cleansing. We don't just wash our feet. We are doing what we call a service of humility. We show that we have actually humbled ourselves like Jesus Christ as servant. You know, in the 
in, in the ordinance of uh, feet washing, no one was uh, willing to wash anyone's feet, is it? At that day, is it? Now, what did Christ do? He took the towel, is it? And wiped their feet. Eh? And he told them, if anyone thinks that he must be the greater amongst you, he must humble himself as a what? As a servant. It shows a sign of higher cleanse. In this ordinance, Christ had come to wash the heart from the strain of sin. It shows a washing of the heart. It's not just about the feet. You are doing something so important. She says this, in refusing to allow Christ to wash his feet, Peter was refusing the higher cleansing. He was really rejecting his Lord. So, in the act of feet washing, let there be no hypocrisy. I wish we could have prepared our hearts, maybe Friday or whichever day, and then had a, a communion. Many of us partake of this without putting away the difference. And I hope we can pray in our hearts. If there is anyone among us who is having a variance with another, it will not be better to miss the Holy Communion. It will be better to confess. By the way, the, the most important thing you can do in your life is to confess. Because in confession, there is healing, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you hide it, if somebody hides the heart in sin in their heart, they are what? Destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, this is in Desire of Ages, 659, paragraph 1. But the communion service was not to be a season of sorrowing. It should not be a season of sorrowing. It's a rejoicing. When we appear before the Lord's table with mourning, we destroy its significance or its symbol. This was not its purpose. Sorrowing is not its purpose. Amen? We should not come sorrowing. Do you sorrow because your sins are washed away? You do what? Rejoice in the heart because the burden has been taken away from you. Amen? Yeah. You cannot rejoice your sins are taken away. You, you cannot uh, sorrow because your sins have been taken away. She says this. As the Lord disciples gather about the his table, They are not to remember and lament of their shortcomings. Let us say life's problems have beaten you so much. You see no hope. Everyone is against you. At this table. This is not the place to remember such a things. It is a time of rejoicing because all the sorrows are taken away. Come unto me, ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Christ gives us rest. We don't need to sorrow. They are not to dwell upon their past religious experience. whether it has been elevating or depressing. 
they are not to recall their differences between them and their brethren. The preparatory service has embraced all this. The self-examination, the confession of sin, the reconciliation of differences has all been done. Now they come to meet with Christ. They are not to stand in the shadow of the cross. They are not to stand in the shadow of the cross. But in it is saving light. At such a moment, they are to open the soul to the bright beams of the sun of righteousness. Amen? These are wonderful words that accompanies the Lord's Supper. Youths, are you having differences? Put them away. Families, are you having differences? Put them away. Do you have enemies? Don't remember it. You are meeting Christ. It is a type of the higher meeting we shall have that day. All sorrows shall be done away with. With hearts cleansed by Christ's most precious blood. in full consciousness of his present although unseen in full consciousness of his presence although unseen they are to hear these words john 14:27 Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give it unto you. So this is a time of rejoicing. Evangelism, page 275. Paragraph one. What is the purpose of the ordinance of service? Reconciliation one with another is the work for which the ordinance of feet washing is instituted. By the example of our Lord and Master, This humiliating ceremony has been made a sacred ordinance. When it is celebrated, Christ is present by his Holy Spirit. It is this spirit that brings conviction to hearts. So if we don't open our hearts, if we don't open our hearts, we will never receive the Holy Spirit in this occasion. Lastly, lastly, yet this topic cannot be exhausted. In Christ giving this ordinance, It was a, a commemoration of deliverance of Israel from Egypt, Egyptian bondage. And it shows a deliverance from sin. It actually represents or symbolizes uh, deliverance from sin. This is a most wonderful time to have such a session. I pray the Lord 
will give us a new heart. Because we are told it's a higher cleansing. After this, it's like a new beginning. Just like in baptism, it's like a new beginning. Also, the Lord's Supper, every time we take it, it's a renewal of the heart and the mind. And uh, I pray, as you shall be taking it, it will be a blessing unto you people. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord keep us. And as the pioneer said, may your names remain in the book of life. Now, if we don't meet, if we don't meet on this earth, we have to meet in the seat. Whatever you are holding on to, leave it. Hold on to Christ alone because in him there is strength to make you go all the way. This world is full of trouble. But we can rejoice. Let us read John 16, 33 as we pray. Let us read John 16, 33 as we pray. John Jesus talking to his disciples at this time that uh, he was going to be crucified. And this, these are the words I'm leaving you with. Never forget about these words. It says the Bible, the living witness of God. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. His victory is our victory. Peace I live with you. The peace that the world cannot give, Christ gives unto you. And uh, you can have it fully. If the Son sets you free, He sets you free fully. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, what a joy this morning that we can share in thy word. And Father, these things you have revealed unto us that we may have peace, peace that surpasses anything that this world can give unto us. I pray that our hearts may be relieved of the burden of sin by removing the variance and the differences that we have been having as we look forward to partaking of uh, the Lord's Supper. Thank you for thy grace and thank you for thy mercies. And thank you for the renewal and the higher cleansing that you are doing in our lives in preparation for the second coming of thy son. I do pray honestly, you may revisit us once again and stretch your hand to save us. I'm so joyful, I'm so thankful. The peace that cometh from having Christ in us. And Lord, May you bless your children. May you keep them. May you give them the appetite of reading your word. And may you give them the spirit of pre presenting it and being missionaries to the world. Thank you so much for your love. It is never too late, Lord, to come unto thee. And this morning we come. Receive us unto thyself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.